here has a their sort of Bitcoin rabbit hole moment, and you know they, they kind of dove down and figured out like why this completely irrational looking system hangs together and works extremely well in the real world after you know uh, you know trillion dollars and, and millions of people trying to you know essentially attack it. So that, that demands respect. You must understand that there is something there that, uh, you know, is very valuable. I think I said last time I did this that, you know, we'd be back, right? And here we are. We've been working on this for six months and talking about everything very abstractly. But to see everyone interact, like, interacting out in the hall back there, making connections, building a stronger Boston-based community and beyond, uh, for blockchain and, and Bitcoin is, is what's most special to me. This is uh, by far our largest expo ever, our, the most hackers, first time we do a pitch contest, uh, you know, the largest order of food I've ever had to put in <laughs> in the history of the expo, uh, and I think that just speaks to uh, the community is really flourishing. That I came to the first expo as a student. I was a graduate student here at MIT, and I just kind of wandered through trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and to see how far Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and this whole world has come in the last 10 years is pretty insane. Uh, and the, you know, the expo was a core part of that. I think we've learned a lot, especially through pandemic, on accommodating for some of our speakers who are geographically diverse and uh, really working on uh, content first rather than convenience first and that's part of why this the expo brand is so powerful is that you know everybody who we have come speaking here are really at the cutting edge of their field and people want to see them regardless of in person or, or, or online nobody complains about that i would say if you're a technologist today and you're thinking about creating the next great thing you ought to be thinking about how you create applications of digital energy for security or for, uh, for beauty, right? You can create something that is, you, you can make Twitter a, a thousand times better. The child in me is just so happy. <laughs> it's sort of like unleashed because you're seeing like, people are using their mental power to bring Satoshi's vision of peer-to-peer -peer technology to life. And I think, I think if, if, if Satoshi were here, um, he, she, they, the ghost, um, would, be, would be very, very happy. It's wonderful how everything in this area is open source. And if you watch something that you really like, like send the speaker a note, send them an email, talk to them about what they've done. Um, that's like the part of the fun of working in this area is that everyone's really accessible. Blockchain is nothing without the community. They all have to have this issue of they need to form uh, an organic community that not only contributes but participates. And they all help each other get up and running with nodes. They have a variety of guides. Um, they talk to other people in their community. They open channels with each other. And it, it's almost kind of like a social network. And so the big idea was to take all these learners from the past 15, 14, 15 years, tear it apart and say, what's good for the central bank in this case? What helps our, what's helps our mission? And then what might not be helpful? And, and then provide that data to the decision makers so that as we think about the future of money, we can do so in an extremely informed way. So today I'm on the CBDC panel. So I now work at the Boston Fed on CBDC research. So myself and three of my colleagues are here. That means you can parallelize transaction execution by just increasing the number of partitions in your system. It's really exciting. And you know, people doing real, serious, actual work. This is a really future-proof architecture, you know, in the future, if people are going to be doing IoT, you know, IoT with CBDC or, you know, microtransactions, who knows. So this is now the vision, right? The vision is it does not matter where you are in the world. It does not matter what service you're using. We're all interoperable. There's a lot of energy in the two buildings that we had the talks in, but also in the hallways. Uh, the hallways are very vibrant. People are really excited about the opportunity, about the potential that uh, DeFi, Bitcoin can actually bring. The community here at MIT is fantastic for, for all things innovative. And right now in the cryptocurrency and Web3 world, I think we're probably in the first inning of a very long game. So it, it reminds me of the internet back in the mid-90s. So what? I usually talk about, or what I'm usually working on, are these like, like bleeding edge crypto kind of things, right? Like I was involved way back when I was involved with confidential transactions or Mimblewimble or, or range proofs or doing all these proofs and things like this. So I'm sort of zooming out a little bit, and 
thinking what are the problems that Bitcoin needs to be adopted, right? And the big one is the user interface, and the other big one is storage. Like, how do you store your keys? How do you, or key management, right? What are the use cases that are going to take the masses and get them more engaged in these protocols and actually you know, holding and, and managing their keys and being comfortable with managing their keys? And just on the CBDC talk, if you can now manage your keys, how can you like interact with your central bank? I'm excited to hear about the hackathon and also the pitch, uh, the pitches that'll be coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's a nice experience. Great experience, yeah. We want to start building on the blockchain, and the only way to do that is to start learning right now. It leads to, you know, uh, sometimes even, you know, people working together on stuff. So that's that's another thing that I find exciting here. We're starting to not see so much ebbs and flows in the confidence in the crypto space, and more steadfast confidence. And, you know, the bigger the space gets, uh, the more I realize that, you know, it seems to be kind of the future, right? That's one of the best things about coming here to MIT. You get to see the future before it happens. So this is a great conference just for that. It is better to be a year too early than a day too late. Didn't get an opportunity to come to the expo. I would highly recommend that you connect with the MIT Bitcoin Club. We're an open club, open to anyone, including non-MIT non students. That is the ethos of Bitcoin, is, is removing the intermediaries from the equation. And I think uh, those ideas may be small in our heads or maybe non-existent in our daily lives, but those ideas come to light at, the, at, at places like the Bitcoin Expo. So very excited to see all the thoughts and ideas this weekend, but also future weekends around Satoshi's vision.